Hi dear students, let's see this question that came in J Advance Paper 1 Physics in the year 2019. The question was based on Gauss's law uh, and the con application of solid angle. Uh, but this question had some amount of ambiguity in one of the options. Let's see what I'm talking about and let's see why IT should have given a different answer in my opinion of course. So let's see what's happening over here. There's a charge shell of radius R which carries a total charge Q. Read this word carefully, total charge Q. It's not written that the charge has been uniformly distributed, mind you. Now phi is the flux through the uh, closed cylinder of height H radius R and this uh, cylinder has been kept symmetrically. For example, if this is the shell, so cylinder would have been like the center of the cylinder will coincide with the center of the shell and uh, depending upon the height of the cylinder in various other options it can be like this right and or like if this is the center is coinciding so we are placing the uh, cylinder vertically so this situation can be like this if h is less than certain value or uh, it can be like this as well like if h is uh, large then it can be like this if h is a small then it can be like this and depending upon the radius also uh, we will see different other options whether this cylinder is enclosing the whole shell or a part of the shell so the essence is that this cylinder will is symmetrically placed with respect to the uh, shell now <coughs> epsilon naught is the permittivity now let's check all the options and remember as i said they have only given that q is the total charge on the shell okay now I, we will discuss what uh, will be the answer if the if we assume that total charge is uniformly distributed which eventually IIT uh, assumed to be true and they gave the answer as per that and we will also see what should have been the correct answer if we just assume what is written in the question we will not make any extra assumption then what do we get the answer okay so in this case if we assume the charge has been uniformly distributed and h is greater than 2r and radius of the cylinder is 4r by 5 this here there should be a comma r should be 4r by 5 so in this case if i draw the figure so basically if this is the shell right and uh, h is greater than 2r and the radius is 4r by 5 so this is somehow somewhat situation will look like okay and uh, if you see this radius this thing will be 4r by 5 Okay, so this radius is 4r by 5. So it is easy to see that this uh, thing will be 3r by 5 and this thing will be r. Okay, so this is 4r by 5. So we can calculate this theta. You can see this is 4r by 5 and this is r. So here sine theta becomes 4 by 5, which we can say theta is approximately 53 degrees. Okay, now using the concept of solid angle, if you consider this part of the uh, shell, so this solid angle if you talk about omega so this omega can be written as 2 pi into 1 minus cos theta right so 2 pi into 1 minus cos 53 is 3 by 5 which becomes uh, 2 by 5 so this is the omega here and same omega will be subtended by this part of the shell so basically we can say that total flux passing through this cylinder will be 2 omega upon 4 pi okay because 4 pi is the angle subtended by the whole shell at its center this is the solid angle 4 pi is the solid angle subtended by the whole shell at its center so 2 omega upon 4 pi into q over epsilon naught this will be the flux right so from here if you see what do we get as the answer so this becomes 2 into 4 pi by 5 right and divide by 4 pi into q upon epsilon naught so this cancels out here this is 2 q upon 5 epsilon naught so answer is 2 q upon 5 epsilon naught if and remember here we have assumed that charge has been uniformly distributed on the shell right so of course this doesn't match option a is wrong okay now if we assume now let's check for option b Option B is, says that R is 3R by 5. So only thing is that this theta will become uh, 37 degrees because if this is 3R by 5 and H is still greater than 2R. So this same figure theta will become 37 degrees. 
so if you check for option b we will say that sine theta will be 3 by 5 which will mean theta will be 37 degrees so now that solid angle omega this solid angle i'm talking about omega will become 2 pi into 1 minus 4 by 5 2 pi into 1 minus 4 by 5 which makes it 2 pi by 5 right hence again this uh, same amount of omega will be separated by this part of the shell so phi will again be 2 pi uh, sorry 2 omega yeah. 2 omega upon 4 pi into q of 1 epsilon naught so this becomes uh, you can see this will become 4 pi upon 4 pi by 5 so basically it will 1 by 5 will come and 4 pi will cancel out so we are going to get q upon 5 epsilon naught which matches with option b right now if you look at option c option c is if h is less than 8 r by 5 so if h is less than 8 r by 5 that means and uh, r is 3 r by 5 then phi is 0 let's see what is the scenario let's draw option c over here so if this is the shell okay and uh, if the uh, radius is 3 r by 5 let's see what let's see if what is the height of this cylinder which just which is just inscribed in the shell so if this is 3 r by 5 okay if radius is 3 r by 5 then it is easy to see that this will be 4 r by 5 because this is r so this height will be 8 r by 5 makes sense this height will be 8 r by 5 now in our question it is given that h is less than 8 r by 5 that means this whole cylinder actually lies between inside the shell that means the actual scenario is somewhat like this somewhat like this and hence we can say that since there is no charge inside this uh, cylinder hence no flux will pass through this hence phi will be zero in this case okay so this is also right option d if you see h is greater than 2r and r is greater than r this clearly implies that whole shell lies inside the cylinder whole shell lies inside the cylinder and this is the scenario and hence flux will be q upon epsilon naught because total charge inside the cylinder is q so correct answer will be bcd now let's talk about the ambiguity as i said they have not mentioned uniformly distributed okay so if they have not mentioned uniformly distributed so in that case we will not get option b only c and d will be correct let's see why a was anyway wrong if you talk about option b we have made the assumption that charge was uniformly distributed if you don't know where the charge is then this q can be here at a single point it this can be here or this can be distributed in this part or this can be distributed randomly so we certainly do not know how much charge will lie will lie inside the cylindrical shell so in that case we can say that option b we cannot say for sure c and d still will be correct because however is the distribution if whole cylinder lies inside the shell so in that case we can say that there is no charge inside this cylinder so phi should be zero and in option d again we can say if whole cylinder uh, lies uh, like you know whole shell lies inside the cylinder pura shell agar cylinder ke andar lie kar raha hai in that case flux will be q by epsilon not irrespective of the charge distribution now as an IIT, as a as a student sincere student who has studied properly in j uh, and he's writing j advanced what would have gone in the mind of a student suppose you are writing you have prepared very well and you are expecting a very good rank in advanced and you are writing this exam so is it uh, like what would you do would you make this assumption on your own in my opinion one should have not made this assumption because see if someone tells you that this question is uh, flawless that means whatever is written in the question is assumed to be correct then of course i will not mark option b because this assumption of course i cannot make in fact if we do not make that assumption then that is a better question so option c and d should be right and when we are writing j advance the exam of the that stretcher then of course we cannot go with the mindset that there might be a flaw in the question so assuming if you are writing the question with if you are writing the answer with the assumption that question is flawless 
then we should not have made that assumption and we should have given only C and D as the correct answer. In my opinion, uh, this was uh, this was not like you know right step by IITs to take B, C or D like both all the correct options B, C and D. At least they should have given full marks to those students who have marked only C and D because in my opinion they were better or they have given a better response. So that's my take. Thank you.